Hey everybody, welcome to Talk Polkadot. We have a mind-melting episode today. I have the esteemed Sky King, founder of Modern Stoa, and also host of Sky King's Mental Playground. How are you doing today, Sky? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me on the show. I oh, really appreciate you joining. I'm really, really excited to get into this, but I think first, could you give us a, a bit about who Sky is and what you guys are doing over at Modern Stoa? Yeah. <clears throat> so Modern Stoa started out as a podcast monetization agency. Uh, I've been obsessed for a long time with the business model of media, and I felt like we have, through our monetization model, created a system that's actually not in incentivized for the outcomes that we want as a society. And we can go into more detail of what that looks like, but at a high level, I think that the current business model is uh, ineffective uh, monetarily for creators, but also for the actual consumers. Um, and I think that with Web3, we have the ability to monetize it differently. So I started this company kind of being a moat between the uh, advertisers and the podcasters in order to allow for more sincerity in media. And now with the onset and the popularization of NFTs and Web3, I see an opportunity to do that more specifically. And we can get into a bit, if you want, as well around how that actually changes and how the if you're looking at a demand curve, how we actually can meet more of the demand and actually start to price things more accurately than they have been thus far in the current business model. But that at a high level is what we're doing at Modern Stoa and what I'm trying to build. And Sky King's Mental Playground is just a podcast that is testing all of these concepts. So we released uh, what I believe to be the first ever long form podcast, NFT. Uh, we did that with about seven clips that I quote unquote meme farmed with original art. Launched that with Bruno Schwartz, uh, the founder of Remark. Uh, that sold out in the first day, which was really exciting. And since then, we've continued to test and launch different projects in that space. No, that's really cool. Um, let's, let's dive deeper, though. I think um, let's, let's take a step down. Let's get right into it. One of the things I like to start out with is thinking about the most important asset there is for an individual. So for a consumer or a creator, the most important asset is time. And the only thing I would say would be more important to that is focus time or attention time. And if we start to look at the advertising market as is right now, and let's just take podcasting as a small example, and looking at Sky King's Mental Playground, if we would have sold the, the podcast to an advertiser in, in the traditional way, we would have needed 600,000 downloads on the episode that we had. So if you take a 600,000 download podcast and you do a two-minute ad, which would be around the average time, often longer, that would be 1.2 million minutes which is about two years of collected wasted time. And that's on a single podcast. So then start to think about Joe Rogan. So you take Joe Rogan and say, like I did, I did all the math for this. It ended up being something about collective time and all of his podcast episodes with all of his advertisers, about 60,000 years. And so we have, we are, we are, and we're selling this for less than pennies on the dollar because it's so inexact. What they do as advertisers is they use the, the influencer as a proxy for the audience. And so they'll take a brand that seems like it might hit, you know, one to 3% of the audience and they'll plug that brand. And what that, what that has done is it actually created an adversarial relationship between the consumer and the creator. So the consumer is being sold something that odds are they don't want and their time, their time is being wasted. What's bad with this is it almost creates like a Trojan horse where you think you're getting a piece of content, but all you're really getting is an advertisement. So you have wasted time from the creator doing the ad, wasted time at scale for the consumers. And then you also have the best of our generation going in, figuring out how to optimize for ad tech. You know, we should be in the next Victorian age. And instead, most of the smartest minds of my generation went and worked in trying to figure out how to get people to click on a link, which is a tragedy. Go to what, what we did. And if you're just looking, and I'm not like, I've always thought of this space as it will fundamentally shift how we exist in reality. And I've always approached it from a moral standpoint at some level and kind of in my dharma or my reason for being and what I want to do in the world. But the economics of the current model are broken as well. And so we can make so much more money as creators. We can actually start to change the relationship between the creator and the consumer and make it synergistic where consumers can now trade their most valuable resource focus time for, 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 for money, where they can start to gamify their understanding of a creator and leverage that to their benefit. And this is done through 
if, if you're familiar with a demand curve, essentially what you have is what people are willing to pay and then what volume exists. And right now, advertising can say, let's just for, for funsies, say it's 15% of the area under the whole demand curve. What you can do with multi-series NFTs alone, just as NFTing these content, is you can start to have people pay whatever price they will for whatever for the different types of content. And you can start to like sectionalize and divide these. And it'd be sick to throw up a demand curve if you do post-production, if not, no worries. <laughs> but uh, but you can actually start to hit all the area under the demand curve. So the creators are actually able to make much more money. And so what what we're building next, and so what I've partnered with, with on Remark and experimented on Sky King's Mental Playground is through these different podcast launches. And we, you know, it did really, really well. And I was blown away by that. And so what I'm trying to build now is an actual platform that allows people to go in and live mint the content. So say you started getting really excited about what I was just saying right now, and you as a fan could actually mint it and own that piece of content, that section and pay a minting fee to me. But now our relationship synergistic where the incentive of the fan is to promote the content, just like the incentive of the creators to promote the content because they both own a portion of the content. That's that's wild. Um, so in it, it's it's paying attention to different to different discussions and then being able to um, and I think we're we're seeing it in music where to help to help fund artists that are that are coming up to mint either part of songs or to be a part of the uh, uh, source of funding by purchasing like unique uh, graphics or content related to it. Um, that's no, it's really fascinating. So it's really kind of incentivizes not only the creator but then the user, which then creates a nice synergistic relationship in terms of of meeting that demand because yeah i 100 percent agree with you with coming from um my my background is, is is heavy in marketing and digital advertising i really am like kind of kind of fed up with it to be fair because it's it's you're it, there's there's a whole lot of middleman occurring when really content's king and trying to uh, no pun intended um and uh trying to uh, get people to that content and people getting to what they need to there's this huge middleman that usually involves a big like either payment uh, paid advertising or something that's really kind of squishes a lot of innovation and, and really kind of limits um uh success unless you're either coming out coming with a big big entity that has lots of funding behind it or just um you get lost you get lost in the weeds because the the costs are too great so no it's, no, it's really fascinating you're, you're partnering with, uh, with with remark um was it did you find remark and, and then it was something that was able to help achieve this dream uh this, this goal which you guys are building now sorry let me uh let me just uh clarify one thing when i meant partner i just meant like launch on remark yeah. i don't have any affiliation with them sure. um other than bruno has been super helpful and quite like a really good uh, guide and friend in this whole process. He's the founder of Remark. So I just want to get clear on that. I misspoke there. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're doing phenomenal things. I am looking to build something separate. So might be able to partner with them down the line. But my what I'm trying to build is really like live stream audio platform that becomes a podcast that allows people to live mint NFTs, have prediction market on the content, wow. and then have categorization through uh, group crowdsourced emoting. Is this something that's only capable on, on on Kusama and Polkadot? Have you have you seen other any other platforms that are or, or blockchains that are capable of what what you're looking at here? I do think there it is possible on other ones. I do think you know it could be possible on Polygon, though. I just the last few days, uh, as of recording in early January, they've been having a lot of troubles because a game built their entire system on chain, mm. which just has eroded it. So there's obviously going to be a lot of issues there. Uh, from my understanding, it seems that Polkadot Kusama, the Dotsama ecosystem, is the best place to do that. Uh, I've minted close to a gigabyte on Remark and paid like less than dollars, like less than a dollar in fees, I think, in total, which is insane. That 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 is insane. Yeah. <laughs> I was just attending a, a Twitter space yesterday about the many complaints with OpenSea and then just using Ethereum. And you know, if anyone's trying to even just send yourself like, move Ethereum from one wallet to another, you're talking a heavy heavy amount of dollars just to make like just to transfer funds, let alone make purchases and mint NFTs. Uh, it, it, using Ethereum, like it's it's crazy. So you're saying you've over a, a gig, which is you know a, a number a, a number of the of, of your podcasts and, and different items, um, and it's you're saying pennies, like it was like a couple dollars. Yeah, I I don't know the exact number. I know last week I minted uh, about 240 megabytes, and it cost me 0. 0.0002 Kusama. So, yeah. 
really like wow. less less than a dollar like pennies like we're talking really really low numbers uh kusama's right around 200 bucks right now so 0. 0.0002 kusama god it's like it's almost not even there it's like it's like having a motorcycle and no you don't it's, really not, it's not it's not it's not it's negligible it's yeah. fundamentally negligible yeah no that's that's incredible that's like what i see with a lot of challenges that um when people talk about like like when, when nft just mint, minting is a big issue and if you're talking about you're not even it's not even a budget item anymore you're just like it's it falls in the miscellaneous category of your expenses because that's just yeah in, incredibly low that's and and if i'm understanding uh polka and kusama correctly that will never change because bandwidth and and uh, um in, increase in usage of the network doesn't it doesn't increase the cost of 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 minting and and, and what would be referred to as gas fees so that seems like it's going to be or relatively yeah recent. i mean i know that when gavin you know set out to build this that was one of one of the issues he foresaw you know with ethereum so I, I knew that that was i mean hopefully that's how it plays out uh i the more the more i'm in this space the more i'm cautiously optimistic that somebody's gonna be able to solve this it seems to be working so far um you know but we will see no that's i i want to be very ca cautiously optimistic with you too it's uh um just and not just from the minting perspective but as all transactions and activities occur in um, polkadon kusama it's a uh, kind of a part of the ability to be able to scale and see that success as we see with like as we see with ethereum I, it literally drove me away because i was like I'm, well, I'm not paying over a hundred dollars to send ethereum from one wallet to another like just it's just not scalable for anybody that's uh you know, uh, not considered like a whale or a, a, a really uh, high pockets in terms of crypto. So that's, 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 that's really great to hear. No, yeah, oh. it's absolutely insane. I tried to, I had this with this one project, I received this free hover car along with like being an early adopter in the project. And for me to go and claim the hover car because the gas fees at the time was something like $1,300, which I uh, was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm pretty good. Actually. I don't, I don't, I don't think I need that that badly, Wow. which is just, it's madness. And a lot of it has to do with, the projects and, and how they're actually writing this stuff out. So I think that was probably a biff mm -hmm. on, on that project's part. I won't call them out for it, but it is, it is absolutely bonkers mm -hmm. and it's only going to get worse as adoption scales. You know, it seems like rollups aren't going to be necessarily the solution. Like the stuff that's happened with Matic this week, like I've been blown away with that. Uh, it's a huge downer. So I'm really excited to see and hope that Polkadot can can really fix this. Yeah, and then like so uh, that's the plan right now. It, mm -hmm. Most likely, I'm gonna be building actually on a Kala specifically. Oh, cool, cool. Um, who the what was the number no, first winner of the P Polkadot auctions? That's uh, no excited excited to see them come out. Um, so they're um, For sure. so they're gonna have they're gonna have so there's gonna be NFTs as well because I originally thought with the Kala being kind of focused on DeFi. They're, they're they're allowing they're having building d apps in which which N nft marketplaces are are, are going to be available yeah so you can build like it'll be open to build anything you want on top of it oh wow <clears throat> so yeah it'll it's just going to be another blockchain that you can build on top of oh. and it's cool because they'll have an evm as well so an ethereum virtual machine so like you don't even need to know <clears throat> substrate to build on it which opens up the amount of people who can come in and actually start to develop new technologies in this platform dramatically because there's very few substrate developers. Yeah, but a whole lot of solidity, solidity developers. Um, that's uh, not enough of those either, but a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that uh, if anyone is, you know, if I could, if I could s s speak to the youth for a moment, that'd be one thing. I was like, hey, if you enjoy, you know, computers and coding, it's like start looking into some of these things where there's high demand because the problem seems to be, and I'm probably overgeneralizing this, but people, successful developers, come in, launch a great product, and then suddenly they're running the run either running the show or a high level position, and they're too busy to code. And so that's a that's a great position to be in that you can be able to project yourself into an organization or create a dream and and launch like you're like you're doing which is which is really um really incredible um so yeah that's a um yeah that's something huge happening and that's a cool it's an interesting business problem where it's like wow this is just creating so, so much success for people that it's like we just need just need more butts and seats and more people more innovative creative people get, get, getting in and getting involved yeah i've literally gotten the advice from bruno to stop going after solidity devs just find a really good potential javascript rust developer that's like really, really, really good and just convince them to learn Solidity in a few months. 
that's how in demand people are. Dang. I literally can't find anyone. Like going to these conferences, I feel like I'm just, my job right now is just online dating <laughs> and trying to like <laughs> just find, find the love of my life here to help me build this. It's nuts. <laughs> Chief human, human resources officer as well as CEO, CFO. Yeah, that's uh no, yeah, that's tough. That's an interesting, um, so, I don't know, it's an interesting problem. I'm, uh, yeah, speaking, uh, in a week with a uh, shared workspace and tech startup. And I'm ho hoping to tell people there too, because there's a lot of people that graduate from college and kind of come in to look for different startups or really make, trying to make a difference in the world. And like, man, this is one way that if you can pick up and if you have the development experience, like just shift your, shift your focus towards the future and either developing and rest solidity uh, and just get, get going with it. So well, that's a, that's a unfortunate problem, but I think from overall, it seems like the demand is, is, is so high there that you know hopefully there'll be more more coming in more project popularity it'll just start driving a whole lot of the crypto community into into polka dot and kusama because i feel like i'm constantly like finding myself like saying oh wow polka dot and kusama solved these problems like with like what we're talking about with uh using ethereum to try and mint nfts if you're not already been in the game probably for a long time with a huge backing or a, a large uh, crypto bag it's hard to even get in but with polka dot you're saying with minting is it, it, with with remark is just not even it's neg negligible i think that sounds like uh sounds like a, a good avenue for uh development innovation to come our way because i don't ever see like oh well this is a you know major game changer or hey this is a problem um polka dot and kusama seem to be a great place for for creators for sure and it's still so early uh in the space so it's a really good time for people with new ideas new projects to come in and and start to participate uh i think Last year, Sky King's Mental Playground was number 86 by volume on Remark, which is pretty sweet. And we're a really small project, you know, so there is a lot of opportunity for people to come in and start to create. Would you say there's other other situations that, um, you know, I, I don't I don't create. Uh... I don't create content in NFTs. Is there some? Is there anything else that you feel is, uh, is 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 alleviated, or you're you're kind of unleashed that you wouldn't be able to do? Is there is there like um, as as you create and kind of ideate and look towards the future? Um, is there is is there a benefit of this this ecosystem grants that you that uh, other NFT uh, creators may not know? Um, so. I think one of the other areas that I'm really excited about and what we want to really do is focus on doing prediction markets on content. So not just all like being able to create NFTs, but also be able to have people essentially place bets and have it be a skill game. Because if you're a true fan of a creator, of a podcaster to start out with, you have an advantage of what's about to happen, whether it be something that's validated on chain by like the length of the episode, whether it be who the guest is, whether it's something that people can go in and vote the correct answer. Um, we are really excited about that because what, what this is doing is it's allowing people to start to play content. And when I say play, I don't mean press play. I mean gamify it, like turn this into a game, which then just opens the monetization options up in ways that no one I think has conceived of before. We've been held back so intensely by this advertising advertising system and just have passed it through as if it was the only way when really we now through the technology we have, have the ability to interact with content in ways that have never been imagined and through the interactions can start to monetize it in, in ways that will allow creators to really be able to have what I call like a thousand true fans. Like that that's, that's the mission of what we're doing here is trying to allow people to make six figures a year with only a thousand listeners which when you break it down it's only like eight dollars and fifty cents per person a month which to me is super feasible but i don't think you're going to beat facebook with patreon by building out some like subscription service i think you're going to do it through this gamification so i think that the low transaction fees and the scalability on in the dotsama universe allow for us to start to do those games in that participation you know whereas if it's going to cost tons of money to be able to transact on all these different bets on all these different staking rewards and all this other stuff going on, then we'll never be able to scale. So what this does is it allows for all of the creativity and creative energy to start to flow through and to start to realize this vision of Web3 that's been promised to us, which I think is unrealizable off on, on, like, on Ethereum. You're currently based in Austin. Um, uh, are you seeing a strong press presence of crypto activity there? Is there is there a lot of um, um, just happenings? Uh, what's going on in Austin? Yeah, no, it's insane. Uh, there are there's a, a huge presence. There's 
super fun meetups all the time. Uh, really great network of people. I think there's a lot of investors down here too. We even start to have like a lot of culture where like I see bored apes uh, spray painted on buildings. There's my friend Sam has these billboards all over the city that talk about crypto and like are actually NFTs, the billboards themselves. Um, I get to meet all of these epic people and most of the podcasts I'm even doing in the Web3 space, I'm actually interviewing in person. Uh, I believe the person who's actually building Polkadot lives in Austin. Uh, the, the, the guy who's actually developing it. I don't know him personally. I believe his name's Rob. But I think he lives in Austin. Um, my friend Charlie Smith is CEO of Nifty Island. We're dropping a podcast in a few weeks. You know, They raised like $22 million in funding to build a metaverse. And it's super sick. They're launching in two months. <laughs> Tons of DGen friend homies. I just meet in a sauna. Like, everyone's talking about it. Everyone's a buzz. But people are actually building stuff, you know? My friend uh, wrote the smart contracts for Crypto Raiders. He's building that. He's in Austin. Uh, Credmark, awesome company, also in Austin. Uh, I believe the the main investor for WorldCoin, that creepy thing, I think his name's Kyle Salami. He's in Austin. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's here. I would say outside of Miami, it is absolutely blowing up, especially in the crypto space, which is fantastic. So I get to go to all these meetups and happy hours and parties and just like, hang out with a bunch of people who all believe in this future, which is incredibly exciting. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. I, uh, I grew up in Austin, so I'm very, very psyched to that. I'm uh, about uh, two, hour, two hours away in San Antonio, and um, there's tech presence, presence here for sure, but I'm trying to help build up that understanding because it starts from core foundation of getting education going, getting uh, trying to help investors see see what's coming and help see the, the disruption ahead that that is blockchain and crypto. So um, that's really exciting with Austin. And, and you know, a lot of times what, what happens in Austin eventually radiates out here to San Antonio. So that's a um, hope, hope to see that soon. So uh, we've, we've mentioned a few things, but um, what um, what really makes you bullish on polka dot and kusama we've 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 talked a few items but is there uh, a, anything else that really kind of just jumps out at you the thing that first got me interested was i'm a i'm a big founder's story uh i love an origin story you know a big superhero guy and i when i started learning about gavin i was blown away you know someone who actually you know people like to say there's like 20 co-founders of ethereum but gavin wrote the book mastering ethereum right he helped write solidity the language uh, he actually was the workhorse who coded ethereum and to have him that early on start to see what was going to come up and to take an immense amount of time to build the correct way a solution to these problems i think is is fantastic the other thing that no other platform has is Kusama. I think it's so underrated. If you're looking at like what's going on with Solana right now, it's breaking. There's a ton of issues around it. We have been able to test and use and mess around with Kusama and it's built into the branding to expect chaos. And so Polkadot's essentially been in some ways being tested and broken and attacked. It just gives so much more value and credence to the to the full chain of 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 polka dot and what's cool is that kusama is going to still continue to exist and i think a lot of people are going to still be there and use it which is absolutely fascinating that it's worked out this way part of the announce uh, uh announcements um uh dr gavin wood and robert habermeyer made back at um i think sub o when they uh, uh, announced the polka dot auctions was bridges are coming too so being on kusama network doesn't necessarily mean that it's only working with kusama soon we'll be seeing the cross network cross network work and i remember recall um uh um, the uh leader of uh, uh, the leader of kilt uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, ingo i can't remember his last name um he's been talking about they may may have never plans to leave kusama like uh, they feel they you know they may just be right at home and with bridges and being able to connect we have not only one main network but then the canary network which for those that do not know kusama kusama is polka dots canary network which is uh not a test net it has real world value with real money locked in with real rewards it's just the canary in the coal mine if uh, i i uh, i i like to say uh, it's uh, polka dots um uh 
handsome cousin that's also a stunt double like someone that's in there to kind of test a few things out and then if uh you know jump you know, works out let's get you know let's let's do it at scale and scale up and do in in in, in, in mass so um no it's uh that's that's really great to hear sky is there is there anything else you uh wanted to mention or is there uh, something you want to discuss i think right now seems like a really interesting time to double down on building i think important work uh it feels as if a lot of the momentum has left the room with a lot of the prices recently and to me that it feels like a really good thing one because there's still a lot of vc money coming in so people are willing to invest in in actually the technology that's going to build stuff but two because so much of that is a distraction towards actually working and building a technology. And I think we'll start to see, you know, a little bit of a flushing of people who are here for the hype versus want to be in it long term. And so it really feels like right now for me, I'm excited to go and grind and build something. And that just gets me pretty hyped to be at that place right now. The other thing I would say is if you want to listen to my podcast, they can subscribe at skmp.supercast.com. Uh, if you're a Yanmi Park subscriber or above, we do early NFT launches. You get a Q&A access, a bunch of other stuff. That's the best place to kind of follow along with what I'm working on, with what Sto is going to become. Other thing is if you are a Solidity developer and you want to change how we monetize media, please email me uh, at sky at modernsto.co. De definitely contact him. Change, change the world. This, man, from already what it sounds like, I've, I've, I'm... I'm a huge fan. Um, I from from just the the benefits that the world can can gain from really helping content creators, and one earn the money they deserve, but two being able to build up and 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 re really come into the space. Uh, it just sounds like you know everything you're doing is just incredible. So congratulations and um, yeah, let's get uh, hopefully find that developer quickly because yeah, it, um, I can't wait to hear more more from you guys. Um, so for audience, uh, we have the link in the description below. So go ahead and check it out, and um, we'll uh, uh, really appreciate you, Sky, have, uh, being on, and um, you know, we'll look forward to talking to you in the future. Thanks, Ryan. Have a great day, dude. All right, you too. Cheers, everybody.